Hello. I thought I'd show you today about um, how to do some of the English paper piecing, um, particularly with hexagons today, or hexagons and diamonds. Um, I've drawn up a project here. Because I'm on a boat, I thought it would be quite fun to have a hand stitching project. Quite often as we're traveling around, we're going, because we're on a canal, we have to go through various locks and things. And I have a few minutes of sitting waiting while the lock fills or empties. So this is my lock stitching project. And I've chosen to do it in these hexagons and quite large hexagons. I'm going to make an eye spy quilt. So I have drawn up a rough idea of what I'm going to do here. And I'm just using one color for all these diamond shapes that are in between and for around the border as well. But all the other hexagons are going to be a different fabric, all with novelty ideas on them so that they can be used to play eye spy. So for this I'm using, the paper I'm using is um, just a light, very lightweight card. It's heavier than paper, but lighter than card card. Don't really know how to describe it otherwise. Uh, but it just needs to have a little bit of a body, a body in it, particularly because the shapes are so large to be able to hold it. And so I'm, the hexagon I'm using has got a four inch side. Um, so it's quite a large hexagon. And therefore the diamond that I'm using also has to have a four inch side. So in order to do that, I by chance happen to have a hexagon template. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's a little bit see-through. That has it's an acrylic template like a rulers are, and it's got four inch sides. So that was really convenient for me. So I'm cutting my own papers. Quite often you can buy packs of papers already cut, um, but traveling around on the boat, I'm not quite sure where I'd find some of those. So I thought I could just cut my own. So I've just got some sheets of card here, a couple of squares. I can cut through two layers at a time without it moving. And because I've, I know I've got a straight edge here, I can line up one edge of my template with that so that I don't have to cut that one edge but I've got to cut around so it's just like cutting fabric only that you're cutting through card so I'm just going to cut this out and to make this quilt I've worked out that if I do eight hexagons up and down the quilt I'm just going to turn this around. It's a little tricky manoeuvre this, but I'm holding it all together so that it doesn't move. If it does move, you can easily realign it because you've cut right in close to that template, just like we do with our fabric cutting and the rulers. So I don't need any of those little twiddly bits and pieces now. Um, so what I've now got, because I've cut two at a time, is two white hexagon shapes. So I'm really pleased about that. And, and to make this quilt, I've done eight down and six across. So that's going to be 48 different hexagons. And I have chosen 48 different fabrics. Now you can get one of these hexagons if you're doing this size out of um, 20 centimeters of fabric or a quarter yard of fabric. Um, you'd get several going right the way across the strip. So I'm just going to cut a couple of those out as well, just to show you how I do that. So the fabric needs to be larger than your paper. Now, if you're working with smaller hexagons, you might only allow a quarter of an inch all the way around as your little turn back. But because this is such a large shape, a quarter of an inch didn't seem to hold very well. So I'm actually going to cut approximately half an inch, but it's not necessary to be exact with that, but it's good to be somewhere sort of close. So you could either cut out a larger cardboard template, or you could use one of your papers on your fabric and I've got two layers of fabric here together and just using your half inch marker with your ruler so you can just set it and don't worry too much about some of the, the corner bits if they get chopped up off because you don't really need them so I'm just lining up with my ruler here the half inch right along the edge of the hexagon and as I said it won't matter if this is not exactly straight as long as it's somewhere close and larger than your paper hexagon so I'm just going to trim around here. I probably could have cut myself a couple of squares first, but I didn't. And same thing, I'm going to need to turn that because it's going to go all the way around and it's not a good move. And don't panic, as I said, if it moves, you can just reposition that paper. And this is not an exact cut anyway, so it won't matter too much if it's just slightly different. 
So do the, the rest of your sides, again with that approximately half an inch out from the paper. There are other ways of doing this of course, but this is the way I'm doing my project. Just thought I'd share that with you. So there, I've cut my self a couple of hexagons there. And I might quickly give those a press. I'm getting myself very disorganised here. And I'll show you how I attach those. Um, there's different ways of doing the English paper piecing and you can get little glue sticks, you can sew them on. There's kind of any number of different things that you can do in the way of attaching the papers. You need the papers attached to the fabric because then we're going to be hand sewing the fabric together. So this is a hand sewing project, this particular one. So now I'm going to lay my fabric right side down, lay one of the papers on top. And I've most likely got a straight grain going somewhere and I have cut mine so that the straight grain, because a lot of the novelty fabrics are one way, I found that was another thing to just keep an eye on that your fabrics are going the right way for the hexagons. And these are going to be stacked with the straight edge joining. So I'm just going to finger press that top fold over about against the card so that you can feel it. So it is about a half inch because that's the way we've cut it. And I'm going to turn that round and hold that in place. And now just again finger press the other opposite edge along the straight grain. It's kind of easier to get it working if you do it that way. And then I'm just going to glue these on. Now you could hand tack these on, but I've got this wonderful Quilter's Choice basting glue here, which I thought I'd try rather than uh, hand sewing them all on. I'm not really a big hand sewer. So it's all a bit of a challenge for me to be doing all this anyway. Um, and so it's got a really fine nozzle. So and you only want just a very small amount of this basting glue. So this is like a no, no more pins type thing. You, you can join fabric together. It washes out. It doesn't leave any marks. And I'm just gluing the turn back down onto my paper there. And now I'll do the opposite side here. So again, just a thin line of glue along there. And because you've already finger pressed those lines, that'll sit over quite easily for you at the time. And that should be nice and, and firm. This glue is quite fast drying. But now, just to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to go back to the iron. And I'm just going to lightly press. So starting with one of the edges that I've already done, I'm going to press that over just to give me a line to follow for the gluing and particularly because these are quite large shapes on a smaller shape you can really just turn this over easily as you go but a larger shape it tends to want to spring back out again so you can see that that's all sitting quite nicely and now I'm going to go back so I've, I've pretty much been ironing the, the, the uh, sides over going around in a circle. It kind of helps them sit at the next corner quite well. So coming back to one of the near one of the sides I've already glued. Again it's just gluing all the way around. So I've actually prepared all of my shapes for my quilt ahead of time. In, as I said you need 48 to do something like I'm doing. This quilt's going to finish up at approximately 52 inches by 60 inches, so kind of a nice lap throw sort of quilt um, for a child to use, um, and particularly with all the fun prints that you can play games of I Spy with it. So I'm just gluing that all the way around. And I'll show you shortly how to cut the papers for the other shapes because this quilt is because I put the diamonds in between, we need to cut papers out. You could just applique all these, there's other ways of doing it, but to do a completely pieced with the, with the English paper piecing method, you would piece in the diamonds and the edge bits as well. So that's that done. So that's my basting glue, and I know this, later on we, when we take the papers out of this, that will just pop off 
that isn't hard to get that off. It doesn't leave any residue. It doesn't pull away from the paper. Um, it's going to be fine to use something like that. Now, if you wanted to, you could just give it another quick press just to make sure that's all set. So there's your hexagon ready for sewing. So I would then put that with another hexagon and you put them right sides together and you just do a little over sew stitching all the way along that edge there, making sure, if you were doing something like this, that your fabrics are the right way up. Um, so I've actually done quite a few here already in pairs. So I've done a little tiny over sew stitch all the way along with them right sides together and a needle and thread. And so I've put mine together all so far into pairs. So it's going to be a lot of fun with this quilt. And then I've used in between, I've used all of this colour. So I can show you a bit that I've started putting together here. So I've started putting a, a corner. So to get the half hex or the little portion of a hexagon along the sides, I've actually sewn a, or drawn a, a border on top of that as well. So you could just put a whole shape in there and then just slice it off afterwards. But I've chosen to actually do the correct shape. So this would be the correct shape paper for all the pieces around the edge on the sides. And then you would need a triangle to fit in to go along the top. And we have the diamond that's going to fit, as you can see, in there. And then right in the very corner, four corners, you need to have that little shape there. So I'll just quickly show you how you could cut those shapes yourself. So I've got my strip of lightweight card here. And I've got my diamond. Now, to do um, portions of hexagons, you need a 60 degree diamond, um, which means this angle here is 60 degrees. Now, I don't often buy specific rulers, but it just seemed like a really good idea in this instance where I'm after some fairly exact sizes and shapes. So this ruler has got various sizes marked on it. So you've got to pick the right size. We know that we want it to be the same size as the side of the hexagon. And conveniently, it has a size that is the right size. So I've cut, as it happens, this is a three and a half inch strip of card, which is what I needed to get my angle right because we're cutting at a 60 degree angle. So in order to get the first cut for the diamond, I'm going to line up one edge along a straight edge there. And I'm just going to cut that off at 60 degrees. Now I'm going to turn that around. And I'm going to line that up with the line that I have chosen to be the line. So the width of the, because I've cut this three and a half inches, it's from a three and a half inch strip, then I can position that, I'm not sure if you can see that, but that lines up with one of the lines on the template, and I can just cut that again at that 60 degree angle there. And that is now the right size for me to sit with my hexagons in between. And just so that you can see it better, I've done these little bits that I've already covered. This is the fabric I'm using, one fabric throughout for all my diamonds inside bits. So that's going to be like that and I've already cut my fabrics for that. Again you cut them larger than your, than your paper template, again half an inch all the way around and I've already done some gluing here. So you get this little corner flap which is fine because when you sew it in you're not going to see any of these little bits. These bits will just all be hidden when you're sewing it in. So I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So that was the to get the diamond to go with the hexagon, that's great. But we've got to do this other shape to give us a straight edge down the sides. So you can see that is actually half of one of these. So this shape that we're using, this 60 degree, works because it all fits. If you were to cut three of these, I know you can't see this on here, can you? Let's have a look. Three of these diamonds will actually make up that hexagon. So you could make a hexagon out of diamonds, 60 degree diamonds. There are different size shape diamonds. 
But to get this side piece, if you take one of these, we're going to cut that in half. As soon as I find my ruler, there it is. So just through from point to point, lay your ruler along point to point. This is how I've done all my shapes for this one. And I'm just going to cut that in half. And now I've already got two of those shapes, absolutely the right shape to fit in between my hexagons. How good is that? And then we might need another diamond here. So I might cut another one quickly because I'll show you how you get the other shapes all from this, from this same template. So I'm going to cut another one here. I'm lining up with my marks. Cut at my 60 degree angle. I've actually got two bits together there. And now for this shape along the top here, you need half a diamond cut the other way. So that ends up being this, which also you could make up a hexagon out of six of these because six of these will fit around and give you that hexagon shape as well. To achieve that, it's half of a, a diamond again. Again, this time cutting through these points right across. So there's your little shapes and they go along the bottom and they go along the top. And there's only one more shape to go in order to make a corner. So I can show you on this piece here, we've just got a fiddly little bit to give us a nice square corner up at each of the four corners of the quilt. And that's a little bit trickier to cut, but if you take one of these triangles, or it wouldn't really matter which one, either one, but I'm going to do it on one of these, and lay it on, on your board so that it sits quite comfortably. It should be four inches ac across, because that's the size that we're working on, but it would work with any combination of sizes. So that that's laying on a straight line, and the middle line goes straight, so the point is up on a centre line there, so that I can lay my ruler straight with that line that goes right through the point and we know it's going straight because it's sitting straight on this line on the board and I can just cut through there and there I've got my corners so for the edge of the quilt we can have that giving us a straight corner we can have that giving us straight sides that way and we can have that one giving us straight edges that way so no matter which way you do it, you just need to work with two shapes, really a hexagon and a diamond. So I'm hoping that that helps you get started on your project. We'll have to see how it goes. Um, so I've started doing a corner here. I've put one of my little tiny corners on the hexagon. I've joined the two hexagons together first. Then I've popped a corner on. Then I've sewn one of these shapes in between. So everything is just done a little bit larger so that when you turn it over with your fabric, and these are all glued on just the same as I showed you with the hexagon. That's one of the side bits. That'll go down there. And that's, that's the same as the corner. So that'll be the bottom opposite corner. So it's really quite good. You can prepare it ahead. It's, you can have it in a bag ready with a needle and thread. Um, I happen to have a very handy little tiny pair of scissors that I use when I'm traveling. And now I can just pop those in a little bag in my pocket with a couple of shapes. And when I'm sitting at the lock, I can just sit there stitching quite happily away, not worrying the sun's, well, the sun isn't always shining, I have to say. Um, but that was my lock stitching project, or English um, paper piecing, with large hexagons and ready for an ice spy quilt. And have some fun with that.